We continue with our introduction of the Hebrew alphabet with the letter Nun. You can see the Hebrew symbol for Nun, transliterated with an N. The next letter is a Samic, and it looks kind of like a, a backwards S, and it is pronounced S, Samic. And uh, the next letter is an ion, and this is one of those letters that's uh, difficult to pronounce, uh, the original way at least. You can see the symbol for ion here, and it's transliterated with a uh, raised C. But the ion is, uh, in modern Israeli Hebrew, it is pronounced identically to uh, the uh, Aleph. Basically, it's a placeholder. However, originally it would have uh, had a, a, a hard, uh, more of a hardness in your throat as you say it. So uh, if you pronounce the ion as if it were an Aleph, you would uh, pronounce the name ion. But if you actually tried to pronounce the ion, it would be ion with the Kind of like a constriction in your throat as you say it. Ion, ion, as opposed to ion. Well, since in modern Israeli they no longer make that distinction, I'm not going to make it very often myself, but uh, from time to time perhaps uh, I will. As far as the drawing of these next three letters, the noon, the samic, and the ion, I turn to uh, the page where Ross shows you how to draw letters. So the noon, which looks like this, it has a, uh, uh, a shape like this, a little over, down, a little over. You should be careful not to draw it in a way that you confuse it with the cough. The cough is bigger over and down and over, uh, whereas the noon is uh, skinnier, shall we say. I should have mentioned that there is a final noon. At the end of a word, the noon will go below the baseline. So all the other letters will be on a line like here, but the tail will go down below that line. And that's the final noon. Uh, the psalmic, again, can be kind of a circle with a little extension on the left side, drawn like this. And the ion, you can draw a line down and then a line over. Uh, if I were drawing it, I'd make the uh, bottom part a little closer to here than what Ross does in his example, but uh, nonetheless, uh, uh, what he has is quite recognizable. I move back to the next letter, which is pay. You can see the pay in the uh, original list of the alphabet. Uh, it has uh, two forms, uh, one with a dog H or with a dot, and then it's pronounced a P and be transliterated with a P. Whereas if if it uh, doesn't have that dot in it, uh, it would be pronounced uh, with a, uh, a PH type sound or an F type sound, F. So it's either P or F, depending on whether it has uh, the dot in it. Uh, it too has a final form. I, uh, the letter cough down here shows a final pay where it goes a little bit below the line in the final pay uh, form. So here it shows initial or medial pay. And again, one way of drawing that is the way that Ross uh, does it. Uh, I tend to draw it more like a cough and then put a little thing in the middle there. But uh, either way, that's fine. But then a final pay uh, will go below the line. So it would be similar to the pay. And then if it has a dot in it, you pronounce it pay. But if it lacks the uh, dot in it, it would be a fe, a PH sound instead. Now after the pay comes the sade. And the sade is pronounced like a TS in rats. Except you can have it at the beginning of words too. Uh, Sade. Uh, I had a professor at Hebrew Union College whose name was Savat, and that was a good Sade at the beginning of his name. Again, 
pronounced like a T-S. Uh, this too has a final form. So initial or medial sade would be written like this. Where, and then uh, you can draw it like this in a handwriting. But then a final sade uh, will have a tail that goes underneath uh, the line. Uh, one thing you need to do is to distinguish the sade from the ion. The ion and the sade have at least certain similarities. The sade will have a little uh, sharp turn there, whereas the uh, ion is more of a straight line all the way through. Uh, the next letter is the kof, and it's transliterated with a Q. Though if you want to uh, pronounce it uh, precisely, the kof uh, is pronounced a little more deep, deeply in your throat. Uh, in English, we don't tend to distinguish between uh, uh, the K and the Q in terms of how you actually pronounce the thing. But uh, the K is uh, higher up in your throat. The kof is deeper in your throat. Kof as opposed to cough. <clears throat> but anyway, there, uh, this form too has a little extension that goes below the line. You can see it here where the vav is at the baseline, but the kof extends a bit below the line, as does the final pe at the end of uh, that form. So that's the kof. The resh is a R, and it's uh, uh, drawn much like it's, it looks. And then you have two letters that uh, are very similar, the sheen and the sheen. And actually in Hebrew reckoning, they consider this one letter, though because in certain uh, words are pronounced differently, uh, the Masoretes came along and put a little dot on the left if it's a sheen, but a dot on the right if it's a sheen. But anyway, if the dot's on the left, it's pronounced as a S, sa, sheen. Uh, and you can see that it has an S with a little uh, kind of acute accent on it. And that's the uh, transliteration of the sheen. Where if, if the dot is on the right, then it's considered to be a sheen, and it'll be an S with a hat on it. And that would be the sheen. And just to finish all the letters, the final letter is Tav. Uh, that's a uh, letter that looks like this. It's transliterated with a T, uh, not to be confused with the Tet. The Tet is... Uh, Again, if you pronounce it uh, correctly, it's really a tet with more of a tongue to it, uh, and then uh, a dot under it if it's a tet. But the uh, the other T is a tet. Uh, two forms. If it has a dog age, it's a regular T. If it lacks the dog age, it'll be translated with a transliterated with a T underline. Uh, but anyway, it's uh, originally would be pronounced. Tav because it has a final wow at the end, but since in modern Israeli we uh, pronounce the, the, the wow as a vav, uh, the modern pronunciation would be a tav, and that's the uh, tav. As for writing these things by hand, well, the kof is uh, written much the same way as it looks like in the Hebrew. Uh, make sure you have a little gap between the downstroke and the one above it. Uh, the ratio is also very similar. Uh, the sheen, uh, one way you could do it is uh, make a little U thing and then put a little diagonal line there and put the dot either on the left if it's a sheen, on the right if it's a sheen. And then finally the tav, you can make a line uh, kind of like a uh, uh, backwards R and then the little curly thing on the side to give you uh, the Tav. Now let me uh, go back to page 21. There are six Hebrew letters that can appear either with or without a dogesh 
in, in, in uh, originally made a different sound depending on whether it had one or didn't have one. So you have the bet can either appear with or without dog age. The gimel can appear either with or without dog age. The dalit can appear either with or without dog age. Same thing with the cough and the pay and the tav. Now these letters that either have or don't have the dog age are sometimes called the bagad kafat letters, taking the b, the g, the d, bagad, and the k and the p and the t, kafat, bagad kafat letters. Originally they were all pronounced differently <laughs> depending on whether they had or did not have dog age. So the bet was either ba or without dog age, va. The gimel would be ga or ga. The dalit would be da or da with a little bit of h sound, like a dh. Uh, and then you would have the ka and the ka, and then the pa and the fa, and the ta and th and the tha. Now in modern Israeli pronunciation system. Only three of these letters do they still make a distinction in sound. So they still distinguish between ba and va. So bet vet, you might say, if uh, in the song that I'm uh, having you uh, go to to learn the alphabet, uh, they make that distinction. And then you have uh, gimel, uh, however, there's no distinction, it's just g. Though so in transliteration, it would be either a g or a g underline. Uh, the dalit no distinction, though in transliteration it would be either a D or a D underline. Uh, the cough is uh, distinct, so it is either with the dog age, ka, without the dog age, ka, uh, with more of an H sound to it, ka versus ka. And then uh, the pe and the fe, uh, pa versus fa. But then the tav, even though in transliteration it will either be a T or a T underline, there is no distinction in pronunciation in modern Israeli, and so when I'm pronouncing Hebrew, I will not make that distinction anymore, though understanding that in ancient Hebrew, they did make that distinction. Again, we should note that certain letters have uh, initial and medial forms versus final forms. So we have a initial or medial cough and a final cough. A initial or medial mem, and then a final mem, an initial or medial noon, and a final noon that goes below the line, as does the final cough, uh, then the initial or medial pay, and the final pay, and a, an initial or medial sade, and a final sade that will go below the line. There are many letters that are very similar, and so uh, make sure that you learn to distinguish them by sight. So the bet and the cough, the difference is the bet has an extension, a little bit of a tittle. The gimel and the noon are kind of similar, but the uh, noon has a flat bottom and the gimel has a, a little uh, a niche in the bottom. Uh, then you have the dalit the resh, and the final cough. Uh, dalit is square, resh is rounded, and final cough goes below the line. And then you have he, and then you have chet, and then you have tav. He has a little gap in the left. Chet has no gap. It's all square. The tav is a little rounded on the left side. Uh, and another indication is that uh, neither het nor he will ever take a dot or a dog h in it. Uh, and then you have the vav, the zion, and the final noon, which are all very similar and need to be distinguished. Uh, the noon goes below the line, the vav does not, the zion has a little tittle. Uh, and then tet and mem are kind of similar. Uh, the hole is at the top with the tet and then the bottom with the uh, uh, initial and medial mem. And then finally note the difference between sade, ayin, final sade, and sin and sheen, which are also similar to each other.